Hello, everyone. My name is Bing, and welcome to my reading challenge. In this video, I'm gonna share to you guys one historical book that really moved me and left me some great contemplation: The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I hope through this video, you guys will get more interested in history and give the book a try, given the values it may bring. Words have always been an ideal exploitation ground for filmmakers and authors. Appreciating historical materials, readers have the chance to experience mixed feeling, learn about the inner lives of people from different eras, discover little-known facts about the past, and encounter more complex interpretation of reality. Sometimes we feel compassionate and empathetic. For those who endure the physical and psychological torments caused by battles, there are also moments we feel outraged by the violence and inhumanity of the feudal empire, which results in suffering for numerous innocent individuals. Well, that's partly brought me to this amazing novel. So first, we'll look through the author of the book. The book is written by John Bowne. Bond was born in Dublin, where he still lives to this day. In 2015, he was awarded an honorary doctorate of letters from the University of East Anglia. Bond is a gay and has spoken about the difficulties he encountered growing up gay in Catholic Ireland. Bond has spoken of suffering abuse in Terranew College as a student there. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas was one of his most well-known novels, and was published in 2006. The book has sold over seven million copies worldwide. In 2008, the book was adapted into a film of the same name, and in 2018, it was adapted into a ballet. The story is set in the context of World War II. World War II is remembered for its cruelty and ferocity, when millions of people were deaf and homeless. The European economy has collapsed, and much of the industrial infrastructure has been destroyed. The Holocaust, as was shown in the movie, was a genocide committed by Nazi Germany and its allies that killed around 6 million Jews. Behind the lines of barbed wire, more than 4 million men, women, and children were scientifically murdered by gassing. In this camp, victims torn to pieces by savage dogs. Extermination was the fate of all who were not fit to be active beasts of burden for the Reich. Sick and old persons and pregnant women went straight to the gas chamber. Everything at Auschwitz was done with hideous precision, even to the slave numbers on their arms. Each evoked incident is made lighter from the perspectives of two eight-year-old boys, Bruno, the soldier's son, and Shemo, a Jewish boy. This merely lessens the horrors of an extermination camp. I don't understand. I saw a film about the camp, and they looked so nice. The first 18 chapters of the book take the reader on a simple reading journey through the boy's daily joys and troubles, including his resentment at having to leave his family in the house he loves. He felt lonely because he has no friends to play with, struggled to build his own string out tires before getting sick, missed his grandmother, has to be tutored at home, and has tragic observations and thoughts about everything. He also feels strange things were happening and had a new world view. He lived comfortably in Berlin, far from his peers. On the first day of his expedition, he met Shemu, a boy of the same age who lived on the opposite side of the fence. He then began playing his favorite adventure game. From that point on, the two kids' secret friendship started. 
From the day he met Shumu, Bruno began to feel familiar with Altwis and was uncertain about wanting to return to Berlin, even forgetting the name of one of his three best friends. Suddenly, one day, Bruno received news that he would have to return to Berlin with his family, so he said goodbye to Shumu in a special way. On his last day in Altwis, Bruno, dressed in Shumu, crawled over the fence to fulfill Shumu's promise to find his father. In fact, finding father for Shumu was just a part. The most important part was that Bruno wanted to explore the world beyond the fence, which he saw every day from the window of his room. But they couldn't find Shumu's father, and it started to rain heavily. Just as Bruno was about to leave, Suddenly, the whistle blew, and according to Shemu, they was obliged to march. Since then, no one has heard about Puno. So, can you guess what have happened? I will unravel the truth of the novel that was romanticized and mitigated under the innocent eyes of an eight-year-old boy. The place where Puno's family moved is Altwis, a Nazi concentration camp from 1940 to 1945. This is where people of Jewish origin and some other non-German races are detained. The striped pajamas were the prison clothes, but in Puno's eyes, it looked like a striped pajama set. On the other side of the fence, was a Jewish concentration camp. All Jews were arrested and brought here, divided into separate groups of men and women. Men will have to do hard labor. Women will have to do other works such as washing, chewing. They are always starved and cruelly cheated. March is actually queuing to enter the gas chamber that is how the Nazis handle people outside the race. So, perhaps, the abode is enough for you to imagine the story, right? In fact, the author has been successful in utilizing a coherent, gentle writing style. Approaching from the perspective of an eight-year-old boy, Puno narrates about the world around him, what is happening and what he thinks. For me, there is a great book that contains many profound meanings about friendship. A beautiful friendship between two children representing two different worlds. One was the son of the commander under Hitler. The other was a Jewish prisoner boy. Bob wire fence represents the boundary of racial discrimination. The two boys understand each other, accompany each other, and overcome barriers between people of different ethnicities. A friendship is so beautiful that in the end, they still hold each other's hands and say, You are my best friend, my best friend in life, Shomu. Through the novel, I gain more understanding of the horror of racism in the past, how cruel and inhuman the Nazi regime was. Of course, everything that was horrible was greatly reduced through the eyes of a child like Puno, like Shomor. But the truth is still there. Millions of Jews were killed in barbaric ways during the Nazi era, and so many pitiful fears and heartbreaking stories were told. I start to realize that the worst human creation is war, 
no matter which side you stand on, whether you win or lose, in the rear or the front, loss is inevitable.